Uh, okay, me again. Hello, uh, Rob Sanderson from Los Alamos National Labs. Uh, so um, this is a project which is using open annotation in a slightly different way, um, but with uh, related um, content to what Bernard was talking about. Um, we are looking at digital facsimiles of medieval manuscripts. So medieval manuscripts are these days being um, increasingly digitized all around the world uh, for many reasons, including preservation. Um, so there was a horror story recently where um, some African manuscripts were completely destroyed uh, in, a, in an attack, um, in a fire. Uh, and thankfully, they were, had already been digitized. Um, so we still know what those manuscripts said. Uh, for scholarly access, uh, for digital exhibitions, for uh, general population, um, and just for the goodwill um, that's generated by um, digitizing these beautiful objects and, and putting them out on the web. The problem is that uh, while there have been many, many projects working in this area, um, they have trouble sharing the image resources, they have trouble sharing code, they have trouble sharing expertise and best practices for what to do. So, you know, when you have 14 standards and, uh, you know, we have to merge all of those standards and create a 15th standard, if you know the XKCD comic, um, we have an, an interoperability uh, project run at Stanford. Um, in order to, tr to try and build a um, overarching framework uh, using standards such that we don't have to continually reinvent the page turning wheel um, just to display a medieval manuscript on, on the web. So we have um, several partners, um, including some of the, the largest holdings, uh, holders of uh, medieval manuscripts, including uh, Stanford, Cambridge, Oxford, uh, Harvard, Yale, uh, the British Library, the Bibliothèque Nationale in France, um, UK National Archives, the World Art Museum, Ecodices, which is a Swiss consortium of, of manuscripts, um, Los Alamos and, and the Mertens. So the asterisk there are people who are actively building tools. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, uh, the technical um, proof of concept um, towards the end of the, the presentation. So when we started the project, we sat down and tried to rethink what it meant um, to do a digital facsimile of a medieval manuscript um, in the web uh, sort of world. So the, the key points were um, that it should be distributed in this global space uh, because there are images, texts, audio, and so forth distributed around the web that you would want to bring together um, to create a rich uh, experience for the user. It should be interactive, you know, this uh, consumer is pr producer notion again. Um, crowd crowdsourced transcription would then be one possible mechanism. You know, there's not enough scholars in the world to uh, transcribe every single copy of every single manuscript, but as we've seen with things like Zooniverse, Galaxy Zoo, um, there are a lot of very interested and, talent and talented lay people who are very willing to help out with that sort of thing. Uh, interoperable, it should be seamlessly or intelligently seamed, um, and open source, open content, shared development, uh, all of that good stuff. So yeah, 100% buzzword compliant. So just displaying images on the web isn't particularly interesting uh, or challenging. Um, what we want to do is have a rich environment where all of the resources that we know about for these manuscripts can be brought together. So the, the first point, of course, is uh, transcribing the image so that you can read it, even if you don't understand the language um, or can't read the image uh, as clearly as you could. So uh, being one of the co-chairs of the open annotation work um, and uh, with a lot of uh, past history uh, in um, annotating it was uh, obvious um, that we had a hammer and manuscripts looked like a pretty interesting nail. So what happens if we just annotate the image? Well, what a, which image are we talking about? So this is a, a manuscript where there's a fold out um, that has some text that runs in a semicircle, but if you fold it back down the other way, that same piece of parchment appears in a completely separate image associated with a completely separate page. So we needed uh, to get over some of these naive assumptions that image equals page. Uh, some other examples, um, there's only parts of pages that could be digitized like fragments. 
the image may not exist if it hasn't been digitized. It might not be interesting enough. Uh, this is a particularly interesting case uh, of uh, multispectral analysis of the Archimedes palimpsest. So the, the top text is 13th century, the bottom text is 9th century. You can only see it under certain lighting conditions. So we have a, a canvas paradigm like Photoshop or HTML uh, with, that represents the page. And that's pretty easy to implement, as it turns out. So what we need to do in order to populate that canvas uh, is to have some way of uh, associating resources uh, with um, the canvas, which seems like annotation. Uh, maybe you want to associate multiple resources if there are multiple digitizations. And this could be implemented um, in a relatively straightforward way. So this is where it becomes more interesting. If there's more than just an image, if you have text, um, then you want to associate some text with part of the canvas where it should be displayed. So you need to be able to select the part of the text, if it's in a, a long file, the part of the canvas, um, and then with the annotation for the image, um, they can be brought together. If you have more information, such as the line-by-line -line, uh, bounding boxes, you could have lots and lots of annotations, uh, each of which transcribes the individual line. That could then be used to bring everything together in a, an overlay environment such as this, where you can see the, the layout, the mise en page of the, uh, the original and the text uh, overlaid on top of it. Or it could be a more traditional side-by-side -side, um, view where you, where you can see all of the image and read all of the text at the same time. This is the web, and we don't need to be limited to what we can reproduce with, uh, from paper. So um, there is a lot of uh, medieval manuscripts that have uh, musical um, information in them, such as uh, this one, which is a flyleaf uh, in the Cambridge Parker Library. So this was a 400-page manuscript, and this is the only page that, that survives, because it was used to protect another page um, as a, so, a flyleaf. So people have transcribed this music, uh, people have performed the music, people have transcribed the text, and wouldn't it be great if we could bring all of that information together to provide a rich um, environment where scholars and um, interested lay folk uh, can see and hear uh, what that text would have been performed as. And we can do exactly that with HTML5. You simply overlay um, the segments of the audio file on top of the canvas, which then gets uh, uh, displayed possibly uh, like this. Um, so you click on the, the play button, uh, and it'll play the appropriate um, part of the, of the music. Scholarly commentary, of course. Um, if you uh, want to say something about uh, the guy in the picture there, um, you have to say, you know, here it is in the picture and on the canvas. Um, this also comes back to the motivation notion from earlier. So we have some annotations that are painting the canvas and some that are describing it. A, a, a particularly terrible implementation of um, an annotation viewer, uh, you can do something like that, perhaps. So I have not yet received the red flag. <laughs> Yay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all very much. Um, if you go to Shared Canvas, um, you can see, uh, you know, play with the technical demos. Um, we are currently in the project working on a much nicer interface uh, for rendering um, and commenting. Uh, so um, I will, we'll take questions at the, at the end. Thank you.